right, if loving you is wrong, fans, this is my first official episode review of 2019 for if loving you is wrong. Let it burn. I just finished the episode. Um, if you weren't aware, I made just I made this point in my episode review for the haves and have nots, my live streams, Instagram and Twitter. My Xfinity connection just copped down on me at like 1037. And even though I could have pull, pulled up the episode on the watch own app, I decided, you know what, let me just do my have and have not episode review. I went out to get a bite to eat later that night and I was up until five. So I was up for from 10 a.m. to 530 a.m. It was crazy. Woke up at 1130. Talk with my mom and sister on the phone. A bunch of people. I was first, uh, looking at some messages. And during the live stream on YouTube last night, um, a lot of people tuned in. People were telling me the same thing, you know, both episodes suck. The haves and the have nots of Loving You is wrong. Remember, I had only seen from the beginning of the episode up until Eddie and Brad were talking, and I was in agreement that the episode wasn't that good. Own released way too many clips and pictures and stuff, so we kind of knew what was going to happen. But I, after finishing the episode, I'm not going to lie, I actually liked it. Jeremy, you're crazy. No, 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 no. Remember, last night when I was doing a live stream and whatnot and talking with people about it, I had only seen the first half of the episode, but a majority, if not everyone, was saying the same thing. I even put a poll up a couple hours ago saying, you know, uh, what what was better? No, actually, I put it up, yeah, this morning. What did you like better? The haves and have not finale, if Loving You is Wrong season premiere, both were great or both were hot garbage. The haves and have nots was winning by a high margin high margin and in terms of if loving you was wrong yes you had drawn out scenes i'm waiting for something to happen but to be honest that was the haves and the have nots for me last night drawn out scenes my mom was saying the same thing and for all of you who are new on the channel remember my mom uh, well you don't remember because you don't know but my mom was really the person that got me into the haves and have nots when it first started it's like hey jeremy the show's on because we had heard about it before it even came on and showtime or what no the um the cable package we had i think it was um dish network or whatever they were showing own as a free part of a free trial package and that's how we watch the haves and the have not so we've been talking back and forth about it since episode one same with the loving you was wrong so if she didn't like the episode yeah then it was you know bad but yeah the same thing with the loving you was wrong drawn out scenes we start off the episode with what seemed to be 20 minutes of recap because, number one, the show had been gone for over a year. Of course, a lot of things had happened that people forgot about. So I, I just I was laughing so hard watching the first part of the episode because it was just nonstop. Travis got shot. Marcy lost the baby. The shed fire. Uh, the DNA test. We don't know who the baby is. Eddie and, and, and Lucian. It was crazy how, like, the first it seemed like forever, like the first it seemed like there was a commercial break right after the recap because they spent 10 minutes on it. I was laughing, guys. I was laughing. But um, I was actually shocked that they actually showed Kelly hanging. Like, you know, at the end of the last episode, they showed, like, her feet dangling and one of them was twitching. But they actually showed her being, you know, strung up by the, uh, what was it, shoelace? Was it shoelace? And Lucian and them got, him da got her down trying to perform CPR. But I once again have to question the intelligence of these officers because Lucian had to scream at him for like, go, go get the medic, go get the defibrillator. What the hell? And they just stood around. I'm just like, yeah, you would think somebody would try to, you know, what, whatever. Um, and can we just talk about the haves and have not references? Because I feel like that's what's going to help me enjoy the if loving you was wrong, just making the comparison between the series. Like, for example, the defibrillator. All I could think about was the episode, the damn defibrillator. When um, Jeffrey took it and used it on um, uh, on, on Veronica. And then from there, we move over to the fire. Um, and what I loved about the fire scene was that Alex was like, everyone, it's like, look, we're in a shed full of tools. Let's bust the windows and get out of here. And then Randall was like, no, don't break the windows. Why not? Because that's the only thing keeping the fire out. And I'm like, yo, that's what's up. I like, I love that. It's like. Answering the questions, we're all thinking like, man, they're in a shed full of all these tools. Why don't you bust a window or something? He's like, no, I got the axe. Let me go for the door. Good call. And of course, you know, they're losing oxygen. Excuse me. 
oxygen because of the fire and the smoke and whatnot, so it's hard to breathe. They're screaming for help. Marcy's just loving it. And then she gets up and runs to the front of the house. And as I said in my Have and Have Nots episode review, some scenes I'm not going to dwell on because I've already done videos about it because Ohm put out clips like when the new neighbors are there and then they see Marcy. Basically, she runs from the back of the house. Tanya's stopping Bennett from trying to help. Turns out he's a firefighter. And to be honest, uh, I don't know what the hell went on in that last neighborhood. Literally. I mean, based off how Tanya was so abrasive and like, no, we're not going to help. Bennett must have gotten to some shit in the last neighborhood. And now she doesn't want to get into it. I can understand that. But number one, he is a firefighter. Number two, they're, 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 they're smoke. And number three, it's like, you know, um, yeah, that would be a nice first moving day into the new neighborhood when you have a murder victims in the backyard of the house right across the street. But then again, if Marcy got arrested, that means that house would be empty. So they wouldn't have to worry about it anymore. Oh, well. But uh, yeah, they go out to continue moving. What was it? Tanya was like, okay, let's go see her. But then it's like, no, no, no. Take this box. Let's continue moving in. Then Marcy looking worse than Wyatt when he's strung out on drugs or even needing to get a hit, asked to use their phone so she can get a cab. And then she's like, Oh, in 15 minutes, the problem will be taken care of. And I'm like, have and have not reference. Remember, last night's episode was out of time, but then the episode before that was 15 minutes. Once again, I'm just making these comparisons and get used to it because I'm pretty sure I'm going to continue to make um, comparisons when I do episode reviews in the future. Um, basically, she's trying to get a cab to get the hell out of there. But um, once again, the smoke is very noticeable and pretty sure that that wasn't a barbecue. And to give Bennett credit, I being a firefighter makes sense to help, not just because you're a firefighter, but if that fire spreads, then that means a lot of things might be damaged considering possibly your very own house right across the street. So they go back to help. Um, and this is the part where we get to the logic of that doesn't make any damn sense. Bennett runs up to the door and we know that Marcy put like a like a crowbar or something within the handles to keep it from opening up. Like I'm not an expert and I'm certainly not a firefighter, but I think I know enough that if somebody goes up to the door of a building that's surrounded by fire and it's blocked off by like a metal bar, I don't think you should be able to easily fiddle around with the bar with your bare hands and get it out so you can open the door. Shouldn't that Shouldn't the not just the bar that Marcy used, but also the handles to the shed, shouldn't they be like really hot? It's kind of like reaching into the oven to get a pan out. You know, like let's say you got a metal tray, you put some chicken nuggets and French fries. Honestly, I'm feeling hungry just talking about it. You you got to put on a, some mitts or if you don't have oven mitts, you just take like a washcloth or something, reach in and pull it out. You can't just easily get the bar off of the door and your hands not be burned as a result of that. Like I know the fire has only been going on for several minutes but at the same time that should make the metal very hard to touch with your bare hand so the logic in that made no sense so bennett saves alex and what got my boo my my baby alex when marcy is first off there's no one in there then the screams happen that's when he decides to go in pulls out alex Anybody else in there? She shakes her head. No, I'm like, that is some bullshit. Alex, that is crazy. But I still love you. Runs in there and saves Rand. Wait, did he save out did he save Randall or did Randall come out come out himself? I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Wait, hang on, let me see. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. Randall, I, I forgot. Basically, Randall got out too. I forgot. I forgot. But um then Lucian is talking with Steven. Eddie shows up. And guys, I already did a video on that. You know, did El did Eddie push Kelly to the edge? And um, yeah, it's pretty much the shoelace thing. And it's pretty much, I didn't have anything to do with it, but that doesn't mean Eddie couldn't have gotten a shoelace from someone else and then have that on Kelly to use. But we'll have to wait and see uh, what the future tells. This is where we get to the party episode where they drag out stuff way too much. Like, did we really need like 10 minutes of Eddie being an ass? Like, I, I tweeted it out like, oh, okay, this is great because I see what they're doing. We haven't had the show back in a year. So they're just trying to make up for lost time by giving us extra Eddie, which I get. But at the same time. It just ran on a bit too long for me. Then Esperanza shows up, but I was laughing my ass off when she threw that book at him. And then, you know, mocking Steven for being a punk and really not much to say here. It was just back and forth banter for who knows how long. Um, just saying insensitive stuff like she don't blame me for uh, her trying to go out Jim Crow style. I'm not going to lie. There were some good references. 
Uh, then Lucian calls Natalie. No news yet. Again, I talked about that in another uh, video. There's not much to say. Uh, once we go back to the hospital, Brad's there talking with Dr. Ratston. I know I probably say it wrong, but the doctor uh, talk about breaking points. They talk about the DNA test. Why not get the test again? Who knows? Maybe it was a mix up, but I did not mix up the DNA results from the original test showing that, you know, um, that it wasn't Randall's baby. So I really don't have much to say on that. Uh, she recommends a doctor or therapist for Brad to talk to, which to be honest, I can understand he's been through a lot and I can understand his point of view where it's like, look, I just need the, the truth to come out. Not all these lies, but to be honest, his life is falling apart. So he definitely needs a therapist, but that goes for a lot of people on these shows. And once again, the haves and the have nots comparison, Jeffrey tries to help people out by sending them to good recommendations in regards to like drug therapy, mental therapy and whatnot. But he needs it himself more than anyone else. And remember, he went to school to study this, but he was a couple of credits away from getting his degree. And, um, you know, Benny recommended the same thing to Hannah after finding out she got raped. And now Brad could use a therapist. And then isn't Randall a psychologist? And he certainly needs one himself. Then freaking Eddie shows up like the damn Matrix out of nowhere and um, pretty much wants to catch up because... I. I was thinking the whole time, Eddie was like, you know, hey, let's get a beer tonight, catch up. And I'm thinking to myself, I feel like a lot of If Loving You Is Wrong fans had to do the same thing where it's like, hey, guys, look, the show's been gone for over a year. We need to get a group together, catch up, get a drink and like talk, watch these episodes on Hulu and catch up. And this once again really makes me feel like, man, I really wish a bunch of fans could get together so we can have an event like that. That would be pretty cool, you know, to meet other fans face to face instead of just me on a live stream or, you know just talking behind a microphone but yeah i did like that nod to the breaking the fourth wall that's how i took it because once again it's been gone for a while eddie and brad haven't talked to each other in a while so look there's a lot of shit that's been going on we need to catch up and kind of recap eddie pretty much saying you know look i've known this girl since she was young um she used to be a christian she's changed her ways i'm going to go over there and pray for her and whatnot what, what do you say i'm a priest or something and then brad is like i'm done with alex i want the truth i'm sick of these lies and he doesn't care what Eddie does at this point, except for the fact that they have kids and he doesn't want them to lose their mother because he knows how Eddie can be. Then we get to another lengthy scene, which I honestly did not mind because, like I said in my Instagram stories, the Larry Eddie scene did something I was begging for for a while with the haves and the have nots. Tyler Perry gave us freaking flashbacks and I loved it. See, maybe... And I'm going to I'm honestly not really a fan of these kind of episodes in different series clip show episodes. Maybe instead of spending like the first five minutes of the episode showing recaps of the previous season, I think it may have been better if during various points of the episode itself, you would have had these flashbacks like you had Larry and Eddie torture scenes for a few minutes and what for a few seconds the flashbacks did not overstay their welcome the flashbacks went in line to what they were talking about oh the bruises on your face well let's talk about the, well let's show the flashback when eddie was hitting him upside the face and the head and then near death how about when you almost suffocate in the plastic bag this is the stuff i'm talking about the one thing I wish it would show flashbacks of is what randall and larry really did to eddie when they knocked him out with the bag I think that would have been pretty interesting. That way, as an audience, we could see what Eddie did not know about because he was knocked out. So I think that would have been pretty cool. But um, basically, the gist of the entire seven to eight minutes they were talking is just the fact that Larry's up and about. He's getting ready for his press conference, you know, putting on makeup to cover up the bruises and whatnot. And Eddie knows about his wife, doesn't hasn't met her, but knows her. And I've already done a video talking about, oh, we're going to meet Larry's wife this season. I believe the actress's name is Erica Page. Um, and, and once again, I did a video on that already. So actually, let me pull up Instagram because the actress actually posted a photo and said the name of her character. I got to find it real quick. And once again, I believe it was uh, Erica Page. And sheesh, come on. Good grief. It's coming. Hang on. December 2018. I got to go back to... Uh, 
Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, she's going to be playing Mandy. Yeah, Mandy. Mandy is the name of Larry's wife. And Larry then invites Eddie to come to his office. What was it? Tomorrow night? Around 8-ish or whatever? And it's like, we got mutual acquaintances, which is interesting. I'm I'm thinking Eddie's going to go. Uh, but a lot of people were messing with me like, man, they have way, way too many gay references and whatnot. And what about Eddie? Like, you know, it's like, yeah, did feel a bit cringy, but at the same time, it's within the personalities of the character, so I'll let it slide. It wasn't that bad. After that, we go back to... Oh, actually, before moving on, Eddie's treatment of Larry, you know, like all the feminine jokes and stuff and jabs at his character because he has gay tendencies, very reminiscent of Veronica and how she treats Justin, Larry, and any other, you know, homosexual men. Once again, not to the haves and have-nots. Uh, then we go back to nosy Natalie's house and basically she sees a fire truck decides to go outside and that's kind of odd because you know Natalie being as nosy as she is I'm surprised she didn't notice all the smoke before but you know plot demands it so she goes outside uh, I just love the fact that Bennett was trying to help out Alex because obviously she had a lot of smoke in her lungs and Randall was being jealous of it. That was pretty funny. And then Tanya's like, wait, are you married? And then Marcy pretty much, no, 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 no. She pretty much just recaps the whole horror thing. And once again, the flashback wouldn't have been bad, you know, showing like those two in the shed and whatnot. I think Tyler Perry should have did that more. But uh, in any case, Bennett and Tanya leave because things get super awkward when Randall gets overly protective and Natalie just says, hey, sorry that you got mixed up in this. No, 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 we're sorry. And then they leave for this particular episode. Um... Then Randall, this fool, he gets on the phone trying to get Larry's ass on the line. And it's like, oh, you tricked me into signing those papers. You're going to pay for that. So it looks like Randall and Eddie are both going to go after Larry this season. And um, then he calls. No, yeah, he calls Larry's office first, but tell, gets told he's not there. Then he calls Larry's phone. like, oh, you bastard. You didn't think I had this number. Then he calls the police. He's like, Don't, and I, when I mean the police, send the real police. Not not that punk Steven, not Lucian, and show better, damn sure better not send Eddie or I'm going to call the FBI. Once again, I'm laughing my ass off. This fool is coughing. He can barely stand up trying to make threats. And it's, what, what do you say? Yeah, y'all should know who I am by now. <laughs> it, it was funny, guys. And, um... Then Marcy is confronted by Natalie about the fire, then talks about how she lost a baby, and Natalie consoles her, and pretty much is like, look, I know you're going through a lot, but you don't want to be going through what uh, Kelly's going through, but she didn't mention the suicide attempt. Brad shows up, asks what the hell is going on. Alex, my boo, I mean, Alex comes from behind the yard, and Brad pretty much dismisses her. And uh, pretty much like, did you tell Randall Marcy was pregnant? And it's like, oh, you can tell the truth. And uh, upon Natalie's suggestion, took Marcy back to her home in order to, you know, get the smoke off her clothes, get a hot bath and everything. And Alex is left there looking stupid. And then we get to the end of the episode. I think Lucian is calling Natalie to see if there was a picture of justice uh, that she can send him. And then Eddie shows up, pours some out, and then... When Lucian thinks it's for Randall and Alex, it's for Kelly because she's dead, and then the episode ends. Guys, I'm not going to lie. I actually did like this episode. I, I did. I think that for If Loving You Was Wrong, it was If Loving You Was Wrong. I think the reason that it was better than the haves and the have-nots is because the haves and the have-nots, for me personally, has been lackluster the past couple episodes. And for a finale we got last night, it was very, very disappointing. So... Yeah, it did. Even though if loving you was wrong, did drag on in some bits. I'm going to give this episode an 8.5 out of 10. I know I gave it, um, the haves and the have nots a seven, but I think if loving you was wrong, the fact that they use flashbacks, the fact that we did get conclusions to the fire and allegedly the conclusion of what happened to Kelly. And we found out who started the fire. And then we got some Larry Eddie interactions 8.5 out of 10. I know some people are going to think I'm out of my damn mind, but I actually did like the episode. I can only hope that tonight uh, moves things forward and actually, you know, makes better from what they did on Monday night. I mean, Tuesday night, but th that's just my opinion. So uh, with that being said, and also one last thing, I did change the profile picture from Alex to Brad. A ton of people were on my ass about it. Get rid of Alex. I do not want to see her. Oops, excuse me. I do not want to see her. 
when I click on this channel. So I changed it to Brad. But um, I got to thank you all so much because since yesterday, the channel has gotten almost 100,000 views since yesterday. And I think it jumped about 200 plus subscribers. So this is renewing my faith that we can hit 70,000 before the end of the month. And I cannot thank you enough for that. But I, I just wanted to say that I do have a lot of have and have not videos on the way. So don't think that just because the show went off last night that I don't have videos to do. I'm still praying we get a trailer soon, but there are still other theories to do in regards to the lion tattoo, what the president and other government official, government officials plan to do with um with Charles. And I did forget to mention this in my episode review, but um yeah, I did forget to mention that Mitch wants a favor from Benny if they get out of this mess with the interest money. And apparently Veronica had an ex-lover who was physically abusive towards her. I forgot to mention that in the episode review, but both of those topics will get their own video. But once again, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Let me know what you thought. I'm going to be honest here. I, I did like the episode. I did like the episode. Not just because it's the first time it's been on the air in over a year, but in terms of an overall episode structure, it was actually pretty solid compared to the disappointment of the haves and the have nots. So one can only hope that tonight's episode might even be better than last night. So thanks so much for tuning in. Keep hitting those notification bells, subscribe buttons, and I'll talk to you all soon. Congratulations on making it to the end of this video. If you like what you just saw, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Or if you have anything you would like to add to the video, make sure to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to keep up with me on social media, go to the description box. All of my links for social media are right there. Also, if you feel like you would like to donate to the channel, make sure to click on the link to PayPal. Any amount helps a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars. As a full time YouTuber, any support from my fans really does mean a lot to me. Finally, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification icon. That way you're kept up to date on any new content I post to the channel. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you in the next video.